What we are now witnessing is entirely unprecedented. 300 million Americans are locked down as their country gets raped. Total economic freeze. 32% unemployment and 47 million out of work. Hundreds of millions of workers are sitting at home, not working. About half the country is currently under some sort of a shelter-in-place order. The Fed estimated that nearly 67 million Americans work in occupations that are at high risk of layoffs because of social distancing measures. A record 3.3 million Americans filed initial jobless claims for the week ended March 21, and economists expect another 2.65 million or more to join them this week. And this is just the beginning. This is a unique shock that is unlike any other experienced by the U.S. economy in the last 100 years. The U.S. unemployment rate in February was 3.5 percent. If it surged to 30 percent in the second quarter, it would top the highest rate on record of nearly 25 percent during the Great Depression. We are in for a shitstorm as the pandemic winds down, then hits phase two, and we end up in a greater depression. This virus was simply a catalyst to shock a broken economy into terminal velocity. The US dollar is going to be tested like no tomorrow, all this stimulus and QE is doomed to fail, and we will see hyperinflation combined with asset depreciation. Go long food and lead. 3.3 million unemployed in a single week, and this is just the beginning of the crisis. Lock and load, because this is about to get post-apocalyptic real fast. Chaos is coming by design. The pace at which Americans are losing their jobs is absolutely breathtaking. The U.S. Department of Labor reports a stunning increase of 3.3 million people sought initial jobless claims last week alone. The unemployment rate in the second quarter of 2020 is at 32.1 percent. In recent days, so many newly unemployed Americans have been trying to file for unemployment benefits that it has been crashing websites all over the country. About 67 million people work in jobs with high risks of layoffs, including sales, production, and food preparation. In addition, 27 million people work in businesses that require close physical contact, such as barbers and restaurant wait staff. So many newly unemployed Americans have been trying to file for unemployment benefits that it has been crashing websites all over the country. And as the American public sits at home, watching their disaster slowly unfold day after day, and ruminates on where all this money suddenly comes from, they begin to realize that the whole structure of our society is rotten to the core, based on a lie that says money or value comes from the productive industry. In other words, if you work hard then you will make more money than someone who doesn't work hard, the scales of justice ensure your rewards, your prosperity, is equal to your industry. The epiphany slowly arises, and the general populace sees it, they feel it. It expands with a wave of mounting and seething anger. Money doesn't come from productivity or industriousness, it's printed out of nothing by unelected, unidentified criminals hiding in the shadows. What gives them this right? Why is our government complicit in this perversion of morality? Who is going to stop it? Is there any sense in even going along with this corrupt charade any longer? These are the questions that will begin to run through the populace's collective minds as they sit at home and await their $1,200 checks, watching billions and trillions go somewhere else, never to be seen by them. The vast majority, more than 75%, of the $2 trillion in taxpayer monies will go to the already filthy rich, corporate CEOs and major shareholders. The little people will get a few crumbs thrown their way and will be expected to be extremely grateful for it. Lots of businesses will be letting go of people and claiming poverty so they can get free taxpayer money. A reasonable estimate of losses from large government programs is 10%. Expect $200 billion of taxpayer money to disappear into some very deep pockets. There is no going back to where we were before. The Fed can make up all the non-existent credit imagination can imagine, but confidence lost won't be replaced. The corporations outsourced our jobs and used debt to buy back stocks to increase the executive's compensation, while the Fed lowers interest rates to 0% to rob the savers and gives unlimited money to the banksters, only caring about stock markets, with no concern of inflation. The people have record unemployment, and they are trying to pay bills to take care of their families. This is World War III, people versus the banksters. Hey, fellow American. You are not going back to work next month or next year. The second Great Depression has arrived. Trump won't tell you, but I will. You won't have rent, credit, or car payments. 
America has hit an iceberg, and your beach bucket is too small to bail you out. If you don't believe me call your boss and ask him when you can come back to work. Money has stopped. Drive around your town. What's open? Two weeks of paychecks have already been missed. Most Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. 80% of all Americans have less than $1,000. Americans have massive student loans, credit cards, home, and auto debt. That $1,000 is already gone. Try buying food with a maxed credit card and no savings. Life has already turned desperate for many. I am weeping for my fellow man. For many, many Americans, life is going to be hell in the coming months, possibly years. Something like three out of four Americans live paycheck to paycheck. How in the world are they going to make ends meet? The courts will be jammed for years with bankruptcies. Corporations are not paying rent. Landlords are being told they can't kick non-paying renters out. And this is when the government introduces the universal basic income. They are already doing it in Italy, as there seems to be no end to this lockdown anytime soon. Many companies and jobs will be gone forever. As the Fed floods the market with fake paper money. This was a planned takedown. They have continually orchestrated these events since December 23, 1913. It is socialism for the rich and powerful. For the rest of us, it is survival of the fittest. A violent psychopath tells you there is an invisible enemy that's going to kill you and your family, and the only way to fight it is to give that psychopath absolute control over your life. And you do it without question. That's why violent psychopaths will always rise to power, a la the war on terror, war on drugs, the new war on pandemics, because you know we have to be on war footing. And it is always the war on us. Do not pay your mortgage. Do not pay your credit card bill. Do not pay your loans. Take your money out of the banks. Take care of yourself. The government will take care of the banks and corporations. You are on your own. This is New World Order full speed ahead. Welcome back to the Atlantis Report. Please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels. I do upload videos there, too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you. Approximately one-third of the entire population of the globe is currently under some sort of a lockdown order, and that means that hundreds of millions of workers are sitting at home not working. In the United States, so many people are already absolutely sick and tired of being idle at home, but the truth is that it looks like this pandemic is just getting started. People are going to go bankrupt. We are going to see suicide rates increase. We are going to see crime escalate, and people ODing on drugs because of depression. Our leaders are totally closing down the economy. Again, this has never been done before. It's not only Wall Street going down. Main Street went down simultaneously. This is unprecedented. Usually, the markets go down, and then the ripple effects start hitting Main Street. This time boom, they are both down. It's going to be worse than the Great Depression. It's going to be the greatest depression. 3.3 million Americans just filed for unemployment benefits and the Dow is up 4%. Are we living in a simulation? The Fed has been responsible for 93% of the entire stock market movement since 2008. It is a con. 3.3 million Americans lose their jobs and their livelihoods at the fastest clip in American history. And the stock market laughs all the way to the bank. Yes. That's a sick bunch of deluded delusional on Wall Street. The Dow is a total lie. Check out what oil is doing today after a move up with the lift in the stock markets. Oil is telling us we are looking at a major worldwide economic collapse. The Fed can't manipulate everything. Cheap oil but yet, no jobs will drive demand down. The Fed's toolbox is already empty. Their final trick is so obvious to everyone at this point that it's laughable. Everyone here knows that a tired trick is called, buy stocks. Their solution to every problem that exists. Buy stocks. Get the hook and yank these assholes off the stage before they cause more destruction. So broke we can't afford a gallon of gas, and can't find a gallon of milk. Thus America, formerly regarded as the bastion of capitalism and economic prosperity, completes the transformation to fascism. Not with a protest and an existential struggle, but by decree and by debt and circuses that will be paid for by the indentured servitude of our children and grandchildren. The markets, if we can call them that. 
Because let's face it when the centrally planned Fed printing presses are used to buy everything that's not nailed down, there's no longer a free market, or all rigged. There are no markets. The Fed prints debt and uses it to buy bad credits in the debt markets and bad stocks in the stock markets, creating the illusion of supply and demand, the illusion of capitalist resilience, and wealth. It's all just a facade, of course since, in actuality, the US economy is a centrally planned charade that Mao and Stalin would have been proud of. Markets are not allowed to go down, and price reality and all that's missing at this point are the five-year plenums. The engine of capital allocation and price discovery, which has made America the envy of the rest of the world and the beacon that everyone wanted to follow, has been willfully and intentionally destroyed. In a week where millions have filed for unemployment, and the US and world, the economy is physically shut down, the Dow is rallying by thousands of points, even though the situation in the real world from just a week or two ago has gotten significantly worse. The fake resilience that we're witnessing in the stock markets ladies and gentlemen is the only symptoms of the economic flu that's engineered to transfer the wealth of the American middle class to the money changers. You'll see no other signs or warnings that you've lost your freedoms and prosperity. This is it. This is not a rescue package, but wealth redistribution on a grand scale, from those that saved and those that toiled and paid taxes to those that did and will do neither. Thus the land of the free and the home of the brave has been replaced with something entirely different. Something that now lives on borrowed time and that looks like quacks like and smells like a communist, fascist utopia. What is next in the centrally planned demolition of America, oh dear leaders? Electronic money, where the individual has no privacy and where you can control and monitor 24-7 the compliant population of indentured slaves? Chip implants so that no one may get out of line, lest their access to electronic money, and their ability to buy food gets turned off. Re-education camps, where you brainwash those that still believe in the constitution and those that refuse to submit to your totalitarian utopia. At a time like this, the words of an unknown sage from 1933 ring especially true, if the American people ever allow private banks to control the issue of their currency, first by inflation, then by deflation, the banks and corporations that will grow up around them will deprive the people of all property until their children wake up homeless on the continent their fathers conquered. I believe that banking institutions are more dangerous to our liberties than standing armies. The issuing power should be taken from the banks and restored to the people, to whom it properly belongs. Think about what is happening here. Without the Fed, the deadwood would be cleared out on a regular basis. Good businesses would survive and thrive. Bad businesses would fail. Nothing to prop them up. Instead, what we have is a system in place that will ensure big businesses with connections will survive, regardless of how well they are run. It makes sure that everyone with connections is bulletproof. They cannot fail. They can take whatever outrageous risks they want and know that the Fed will be there to make them whole. They are already wealthy, but they get fabulously more so in each successive crash. They love crashes because it allows them to feast at the Fed trough each time there is hysteria. This is how our financial system now works. You work hard to make money. The rich get their money made out of thin air. Why play a game that's rigged against you? It's one thing if it's like it is in Vegas where you know the odds are against you, but it's an entirely different thing when the other side is telling you all the rules are there to ensure a level playing field, when in fact they are there to make sure you get skimmed, extracted, and screwed until you finally die. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like. Share. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you.